Well, I think the way Russia sees itself is as a great power, and it oftentimes, I think, recognizes that its its uh, capacity to be a great power um, uh, is sometimes uh, challenged or limited. This has been a constant struggle for Russia throughout its history, where it obviously has the immense geographical size of being uh, a, a major force, yet then st always struggles to sort of either have uh, the economic heft or you know the military capacity. So I think that's the context that you have, a, especially with Vladimir Putin uh, in the Kremlin, the sort of obsession with geopolitics. And so the way BRICS comes into this, I think, from a Russian standpoint, is that it, it's a counter uh, to a U.S. led or American led G7 or global order. And it's this is essentially Russia trying to uh, hoping to kind of counterbalance uh, building ties with uh, with not with China, uh, with India, where it's had a long relationship. China, the relationship is now on much better footing, stronger footing. There was a lot of tension during uh, actual uh, the, the Cold War period between the Soviet Union and China, but there's a long standing relationship. And then uh, with Brazil and South Africa, uh, an effort to sort of essentially globalize uh, uh, these these linkages with what we're seeing, um, especially 10 years ago, 15 years ago as rising powers, right? So China is a rising power, India is a rising power, uh, and Brazil and, and South Africa, perhaps a little bit less so, but still as sort of the rising players that the, that the West doesn't include in their sort of fancy clubs uh, and doesn't think about uh, as much. And, and I think, you know, I, you have to look back and say, BRICS has had some success at, at, uh, at at least you know linking these countries together, uh, perhaps not really developing sort of a counter agenda to the G seven, uh, but I think it, it's it's still quite useful in, in many respects for Russia. I think though that particularly pre February twenty twenty two that Russia was a power on the rise, uh, and that what Russia was going to do uh, uh, with the war in Ukraine was not just take Ukraine. Uh, but also would demonstrate to the West of the strength of the kind of illiberal strongman authoritarian system. Uh, and that this would be a real shock to the West and then lead to Russia's recognition as, of being a, a, a great power. So uh, you have to view that as, as in the context of um, BRICS, in the context of kind of the pre-February 2022 world and the post February 2022 world. So I think pre-February 2022, Russia saw itself as as sort of leading the way uh, in, you know, really driving um, a counter to an American-led world order uh, with sort of wanting to kind of partner with China. And you saw that in the statement that was done at the Beijing Olympics prior to the uh, invasion, but Russia viewing it more as an equitable partnership with China and that you know what they're trying to essentially safe make the world safe for autocracy where everyone can sort of do their own thing and we'll have have win-win cooperation when we want um but we're not going to sort of push a kind of democratic values based foreign policy and that's sort of a product of the past and obviously that has not worked out well for russia the war has ground them down i think it's been a total geopolitical disaster uh, for them, it's isolated Russia. It's made them highly dependent on on the Chinese economy and very much as second fiddle. It is this is you know going to be no matter what happens in the war it will be economically devastating for Russia. So then, how does that relate to BRICS? So I think maintaining BRICS and and maintaining a path for Russia out of its isolation is therefore critical. And so it wants to sort of keep up the the uh, the image of Russia being sort of very active in the world, but it's going to very much struggle to do so. And when it, we think now about a multipolar world, you know, I think the major powers are the U.S. and China. And I think also I would put the European Union in this camp, although it's very hard for Europe to somehow, you know, oftentimes to work together to assert itself. And then you have countries like India and Brazil that are very much, you know, potentially you know, real world powers. And then Russia has that kind of status because of its nuclear forces and because of history, but it's going to really struggle to, I think, assert itself as 
in that same club, but it wants to keep it alive. And for countries like India that want to maintain sort of positive relations, it doesn't really have an interest in, in sort of moving it to the side. There's there's some fundamental challenges to BRICS. And the, the, two, the biggest, I would say, uh, is China and India, not Russia, right? So both India and China in some ways have, co you know, very positive cooperative relations with Russia, yet China and India are competing and have, you know, are almost essentially in a hot war against each other uh, not not so long ago and uh, just a, a, a year or so ago. Um, so I, I think that is a big challenge for uh, for any sort of countering multilateral club is how do they actually get on the same page? Um, and this is true with with other, you know, former you know Russian Soviet partners such as Vietnam that has you know real problems with uh with with China that said I do think that this that the expansion of BRICS recently um you know is something to keep the West on its toes I think one of the things that the administration the Biden administration um kind of missed the boat on uh by focusing so much on the G7 so it's really revived the G7 as a sort of global council that then tries to you know address major issues in the world is that you leave out so you a leave out a lot of countries that are really important such as India and Brazil uh, that both are democracies and you probably want to include other countries like Australia as well but you know when there was this talk of of creating um, a, a, a club of democracies. Um, and the summit of democracies, or the summit for democracy that Biden uh, ended up convening, the original idea for that wasn't a summit to bring together a bunch of democratic states to talk about how great democracy is, which is sort of how it devolved to, but was to make it not a summit for democracy, but a summit of democracies with the idea that you would be bringing rich and poor democracies, you know, from all over the world, Ghana, Senegal would sit on the same table with Japan in the U.S., uh, in 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 Europe, and that I think was then to try to create a pathway for uh, the so quote unquote global South to really access kind of engagement with the kind of global North and the industrial uh, the the major industrial powers, and we haven't really seen a framework there. So I think the expansion of BRICS ends up potentially creating a, a challenge to the, the quote unquote West. Because we're not really creating real ladders for many other, you know, smaller middle powers, middle countries that may be democracy or maybe want to have better relations with the West to really access our kind of global decision making, so to speak. And here, China uh, is, is with Russia, with BRICS, potentially creating some sort of venue like that.